Well, hello once again. Uh, I hope everyone had a nice Christmas. Ours went very well. Uh, as usual, we have uh, about 75 million candy canes left over. I don't think anybody eats these. They, they just sit around until they eventually get thrown away, I guess. I don't know. The weather's not too bad in Arkansas uh, today. A little crisp, maybe, but not really cold. Not really cold, cold. Uh, not like uh, those folks up there in the Northeast. Oh, man, they can have all that stuff. More power to them, you know. <laughs> That's why I left that place years ago. I came down here where things are much more agreeable to me. Uh, I received a gift uh, in this box uh, over Christmas uh, as one of my gifts. And uh, I wanted you to see what it was. Well, this is it. Check this thing out right here. This is a universal digital dial and it uh, is put out by the electronic specialty products uh, LLC company and the name of it is a DD 103 and I've just connected it to the uh, V20 tube on top of the oscill on top of the uh, VFO chassis and it's actually picking up the frequency and displaying it over here uh, enabling me to, to dial in I just got done calibrating it for 39.16, and I have the uh, the uh, freewheelers on there. I have the headset plugged in. I don't, uh, as well as the speaker. I don't want to wake up the wife and her mother, but you can hear it a little bit here. Anyway, that's uh, 39.16. You know, I contacted the guy that uh, uh, sold this thing to me, and uh, I guess I contacted him three or four times on email uh, because I didn't quite understand the instructions. He probably thought I was a blithering idiot, but that's okay. You know, I mean, I'm a customer, therefore I am his very best friend. Uh, the instructions, I think, could have been a little bit better. He wrote it. For the more experienced uh, hams, I think, I think a uh, perhaps a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten step kind of approach would have been better. And uh, the uh, the emails, uh, he responded right away. I have to admit, now, his name is Ron. He responded right away, but the emails could have been a little more descriptive, you know, uh, especially for uh, an amateur kind of feller who just started out in ham radio you know help us along remember we're your very best friend because we're your customers other than that I think the uh, the digital tuner is really cool I really like it and uh, it, it's pretty darn accurate look at look at that. I got 3916 on my dial right there and and the point I tell you after calibration that baby's right on I'm just let me see if I can get it to get that baby to get up there to 39.16, let's see what we get. That's pretty good. A while back I told you if I didn't get my dial squared away, there would be a plan B. Well, now you know what plan B was. Getting one of these. Uh, but my son bought it for me for Christmas. Uh, kept me from having to, to pay for it. $125. Uh... I think he paid for it on eBay, and of course you can always go to the electronics uh, specialty uh, products outfit located in, in uh, Oviedo, Florida, or Oviedo, Ove, Ove, Florida, something like that. Anyway, electronic specialty products. Anybody wants to tune, uh, turn their tube rig? <laughs> it covers many, many different rigs. Also. Uh, there's something here I don't like. I, I can hook up directly to the output. I went down to Radio Shack and bought these two connectors. One is an L connector on the bottom, and the other is a Y connector. And I and I plugged it in the L connector into the back of the uh, the uh, VFO chassis where that black wire and that black small black co uh, coax comes in, and it stuck up in the and once I had it plugged in, it stuck up in the air like that. Well, I was able to plug this wire, which comes with the DD-103, into one side of it. The other side was plugged uh, that coax cable that 
connects to the back of the VFO chassis. It didn't work. Uh, I was get, It was not reading any uh, frequencies. Yeah, so I contacted Ron. I said, what's going on? He said, well, you're not reading the frequency. He said, take and use the tube shield and put it on V20, which I did. And there's a small little circuit board right here. You can see it. And you connect your cable into it. And then the other end, of course, goes to the back of this box. And uh, the problem is I can't put my lid on my transceiver now. Not a good design. There has to be something different, something better than this. Uh, you know, I, I have a hole where I could have run this thing right out the back of the, uh, the chassis. Not a problem. But, you know, I don't know if I can turn this thing down. And even if I did, would it? I guess it would clear the lid. It's kind of hard to tell. If if you have to leave it in this position, that, that sucks. You know, I, I want to be able to put the lid back on. So I'll be contacting Ron one more time about that situation. I asked him once. He, he did not give me an answer. So... No, I'll, I'll bug him again see what happens. So, uh, until then, this is John. So I decided not to, not to sign off quite yet. I went ahead and, and uh, re-plugged that setup I bought at uh, Radio Shack. I plugged the L connector down in the back of that uh, VFO, and I plugged the Y connector to the top of it, and I fed the DD-103 wire into the one side, and I hooked the the uh, transceiver uh, VFO cable, output cable, into the other. It goes down to this circuit board down here. And guess what? It's working fine. <laughs> I don't know why it didn't work earlier. It must not have been programmed exactly right or something. But everything is fine, which means I can now feed my cable out through the hole there in the back of the uh, transceiver. And I can uh, go ahead and put my lid back on which is great. The only thing I want to do though is I want to come up with some kind of arrangement where there's a strain relief on that cable. And I don't want that cable to be yanked and pulled you know, accidentally. So I'll have to come up with some kind of a gizmo, some kind of an arrangement for that. I may have to drill a hole through the uh, chassis right here and put a, a couple of tie wraps. I don't know. If anybody's got any ideas, let me know. I, I'm, I'm open to an idea on that. But uh, Looking good. Here's the still got the freewheelers on. And it's reading 3916.04. That's pretty darn close. Let's look at this thing at night. I think it looks cool. But anyway, if y'all or anybody's interested in a digital uh, incidentally this thing will work on any just about any tube radio. Hammerlin, uh, Halicrafters, the old uh, a Swans Nationals. He's got a, an entire uh, list in here of uh, uh, of all the radios they'll work in. Uh, general coverage receivers. It doesn't have to be a ham radio. It could be a general coverage uh, uh, like like my Hammerlin uh, boat anchor over here. It's a general coverage receiver that uh, uh, 129 the HQ 129X. It would work on that, and that's where this. Uh, tube shield would probably work much better. It's a deeper, deeper chassis. Get down in there completely out of the way. Alrighty, finally, that's it. Well, that's it for now. Uh, incidentally, the calibration on that uh, on that little thing, uh, on that DD-103 from, you know, band to band, it will be within 50 hertz. Uh, I think it was designed to be within 25 hertz. The best I've been able to do on the 80 meter band, I mean the 40 meter band, is uh, I think it's 46 hertz as far as accuracy goes, but that's 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 real good. I mean, you're, we're dealing here with an old old piece of uh, equipment, my uh, Heath kit HW101. You know, trying to convert from the you know the old tube stuff into a digital box, you're going to have some variances there. You know, allowable differences, I guess, is what they're called. But it's a nice piece of equipment, and if you have a need for one. Uh, and you have a few extra bucks, or you can save up a few extra bucks. Yeah, go ahead and pick one up. They're kind of neat. I can now put my lid on my unit, which I will do in the next day or so. And uh, I want everyone to have a very good upcoming new year. From my family to yours.